Sorry about that. Left all my brushes in the back seat. Right. So this is my range of brushes. A lot of mop brushes, um, fine liners, um, these nice soft brushes for softening, which we're going to do today anyway, because I want to do the top here I'll move that up I want to do the top of him here um, I did a little bit yesterday on him around the bottom just doing some softer little fuzzy blurred bits but what I want to do is show you that way at the top really um, and what I've done if I put that, you see I've just done some um, blurred areas around here. There's going to be a lot of whiskers here, a lot of really white whiskers. So you won't see or notice a lot of it. But you've got to look on your picture behind um, those whiskers and see what's there first. Because you can't just paint the whiskers without painting anything. This is my reference, so let me get this off the stand. This is my reference um, from a photograph by Chris Hagen. And I have it on an iPad because you can zoom in, which is really good if you get a good reference picture. I haven't done the bottom part so much here. That's still a lot of the canvas showing through. Because when I was putting the darks in, it was mixing with my lights, so I give up on that bit. Let that dry and then I'll put the darks in. You can see here I've made it quite soft, so it gives um, a blurred sort of look to it. So it brings focus into this area. It's quite a good trick that to do, is just blur you know, the rest of it to bring focus into where you want your eye to go really, which is around the eye area and that's what I'm going to do at the top here even though I've mapped out a bit where the stripes are <coughs> excuse me um, I'm still gonna sort of give it a little bit of a soft focus if you will I'm also wanting to make it a lot brighter than the actual photograph so that when it's all finished and I've got the um, detailing then what I'll do is I'll put some glazes over because I want a yellow sort of tinge to parts of it and then just sort of little highlights showing where the light's just catching um, the white bits on him. So nothing is whitey white yet. It's all got a very yellow tinge. I've been sort of messing about with the nose um, and messed about with a pink bit on his nose here as well last night. I've got a new light 
which was uh, brilliant. It means I can paint a bit longer now. Look at all my packing up in that corner. How disgusting is that? Hello, everybody. Hello, Heather and Karen. It's nice to uh, <laughs> not see anybody, but you know what I mean. So what I've done, because I want it all to be blurred and because the first sort of layer soaks into the canvas, um, it, the canvas acts a bit like a sponge, I find. What I've done is I've oiled it up, which means I've put linseed oil all on this top and wiped it back. It's a little bit like a wet in wet technique with watercolours. But instead of using water, what I've done is use linseed oil to wet the canvas. And then your paint flows a little bit thicker, you can soften edges. But it does take a bit longer to dry than the white spirit. So you've got to be prepared to let it dry a little bit um, before you work on it. So that's what I did with the bottom layer. I just sort of oiled that up and then I've just oiled this up before before anyone's um, come online. On my tear-off palette here, I've got some yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, Payne's grey, Naples yellow, titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine. Um, those are my basic colours for this really. I haven't got any black out at the moment because I tend to put that in later on. I find um, I like to sort of put the blacks really black in later on to make it pop out a little bit. That's just preference really for you. So I'm going to mix up the colours. I'm going to mix up my lightest colours first which is the orange. Because as you know if you're going straight with dark and then you get it mixing with your lights. It's going to look really, uh, mix with your, your lights. The dark is going to mix with your lights and make it a really dull colour. So I'm going to go in with the bright straight away. So I'm just mixing some um, yellow ochre and burnt sienna. A very slight touch of... Um, uh, white spirit on my brush just so that the paints flow really not not too much and then I'm putting a little bit of Naples yellow in there see how it looks on the uh, actual um, thing not nope, that's too pink so we're gonna put a little bit more yellow ochre you can change colors don't worry about it you know, as long as you've got those colours around it, I usually find that my colours get richer later on. They always look a bit sort of um, uh, dull with no life to start with. And remember, you're not doing any, I'm not doing any detail here because what I want to do is do a little bit of a softer feel right just some little bits of fur coming round the outside still the see my pencil marks so don't worry if you know you're not getting a lot of paint on it doesn't matter don't worry about it then I'm going to put a little bit of background colouring and I'm going to use a slight touch of ultramarine just with the white just to uh, dull it I don't want it to be too white because we've got some hairs off his ear there which are going to be quite white and I'm going to bring that in just to the side of his head there so you're not doing um, a dark background we're doing a light one for a change then I've got some raw umber with some white here, which I'm just going to put there as like a, a dullish grey. This ear, that'll be quite, really quite dark, so area. A little bit softer. It all looks really, um, 
what's the word? Messy at first. So don't worry about that. A little bit of a bluey tinge as well coming on here. And if you do it wrong, don't worry because we could this is only a first layer, we're gonna go over it a little bit. There. And because you've got oil in, it's gonna stay wet for quite a while so we can maneuver it about we can mess about with it let it travel a touch remember we've not put the darks in yet I want all this to be quite detailed so I'm just really doing the softening bit at the back here I've done more on that side than I have on this but we'll we'll include this in with it. I've got a little bit of green in the uh, photograph there, so I'm going to put some sap green. Some people don't like sap green, but I do. Can't get it out of the tube. A little bit coming out there. I'm a devil for not putting the tops on uh, paint. So I have to stick the end of a paintbrush in a tube to get it to get any paint out. I've got a little green, bit of green at the bottom here, so that'd be quite nice with that. Just makes it look as if there's a bit of background there. Then again, I've got some real sort of light bits and because it's blurred you know it doesn't matter if you make a mess if you've got those sort of colours that you need around there then it looks like where it's supposed to there's a little bit of Naples yellow and white here because I've got some white bits coming off his ears so I want don't want to go in too white with this Then I've got some brown and white there, just like a dull grey. Because this is going to be quite bright and yellow, you've got to think about what colours are in the, the actual thing as well. So now I've got some raw umber, which is the brown. Whoops, too much of the blue there. With a little bit of um, ultramarine. Because at the top it will be a little bit of a blue tinge. But again, you know, you can put this in later on. This is just a mapping out of where the fur is, where your, your colours are, where his stripes are. And I'm just giving him a little bit of a hairy edge there even though it's it is going to be blurred we're just having a little bit of a, a hairy edge there sounds a bit weird but it's the only word i could think of I'm not doing the ears because those are going to be quite sharp might as well put that in there even though that's going to be quite detailed you, we can paint the detail on top of the blur effect Let's do that bit as well And then again, just with that yellow ochre and Naples yellow. So you can still see me me um, pencil marks. So I'm not stressing out that I've done it wrong. You know, I'm going to soften all this. So I've got it all there. Right, that'll do for now. I think. Hi Linda, you're late. <laughs> so now I've got, um, this is a Monday mop off Rosemary's brushes. I love this brush, it's a really good brush for blending. And all I'm going to do is just tickle the surface. And what you do, because it's blurred, you want to merge the colours that you've put on ever so slightly. You can do some 
swirling motions. See, we're just getting a little bit of blurry effect there. Don't push on it too much that you totally mix the colours and it just becomes one sludge. You just want to very lightly soften it. Don't worry if you go over edges if you because you're going to paint that on top anyway. If it gets too um, brewed up with paint, just take it off. That's why I have those towels there. And you see you get quite a sort of blurriness to it. Now this is still quite light. I can still see my pencil on the canvas over it so the paint isn't too thick yet but you get a sort of blurry effect to it. Depends how much blur you want as to how much you push on the canvas. You see I haven't got a lot of paint on that brush so I'm not picking up paint I'm just sort of tickling the surface with it. <laughs> I've got relations in Dublin. Right, okay, so you've got that in, that's sort of there to s as a base, really. So what I'm going to do now is start to work in with more colour, right, especially on these um, stripes. If later on you decide you want a little bit of detail on the stripes then you can come back when it's dry and start to put the detail in but don't be impatient with it let it all dry first look at the way the stripes are going they don't just go straight across they sort of curve over the top of his head here and this is just raw umber with a little bit of coal, uh, ultramarine in. It's a little bit of um, a guide, I suppose. I'll put a little bit of this in here. I might as well go further down with it. I don't go. I don't like to go in with too much black straight away, and the photograph hasn't got too much black on it's like a brownie black so it's a warm black which I want to put in underneath this orange really I'm just going over these bringing a bit more there The trouble is because you've I've wet it first with the um, linseed oil and it tends to bring colour off if you work into it too much. So you just got to gauge it yourself really. And it is a matter of not being too impatient with it. I always take my ta time with the wildlife. I like to look at it and mull it over and you know see what I like see what I don't like I don't race through it because I like to try and create a little bit of a mood to it I think to me that's more important than um, all the detail you know you need your detail in there but it's quite nice to have a little bit of a mood to it And then I'm going to mix a little bit of the ultramarine with our titanium white and a little bit of Payne's grey in there because I've got a, a little bit of a highlight in that dark fur which I just want to sort of put in. can't see it that much but... You know, don't be frightened to work back in. I think a, a lot of you get put off because you you put colour on and you think that's it. And why doesn't it look right straight away? It never looks right straight away. 
you've got to keep sort of working in one to get the colour ri uh, richer and another to get all your contrasts right right then you can go in as well I think I'll get a bigger just get a slightly a bigger a smaller brush sorry I'm going to go in, I'm going to use the Naples Yellow and then I'm going to start to just put some little highlights. This will pick up a little bit of that dark which it is, you know, and this might be the time to um, let it dry and come back it, to it another day but I'm going to crack on because people are watching so I'm just doing some like bigger bits of fur to make it look a little bit furry I can still see my pencil lines so I know it's, it's going to have a couple more layers on here yet You can also turn it upside down if you feel easier doing it that way. Again, just with that brush, just very gently. See, I'm flicking it out the way that the, the fur is growing. It's no good softening it off horizontally. You want to sort of push it out because you are pushing the paint with the brush. So you, you want to push it in the direction that the fur's growing. But it's quite nice when you've got like areas that are soft and then areas that are really sharp gives you sort of a focus to it especially to the front areas again just with some you see just a little bit of my arm's killing me oh. Sort of comes around. You see, I'm picking up the the dark of the dark stripes there. So I won't probably do so much on that, but I'll come back to that another time, where I'm not picking up the paint. Bring that in. It just gives you a bit of a furry feel. White and na Naples yellow. So you can't put you can't possibly put your highlights in now because it's picking up a lot of the dark paint. So I'm not even going to try. But for now, I think I'm just going to leave that. Go on to something else because it's picking up too much. I mean, it's a good start. I'm just softening it off a touch with this. It's a nice big, another good brush is like an old sable brush. Those are nice and soft. Anything soft is really, really quite nice. Then I think what I'll do, I'll put some real dark in the, on the, uh, so you get an idea. This is just with a bigger brush. There's no detail on here yet. I'm just putting in the area that's going to be dark. Then the detail will go on top. And then 
here. There's no point to this brush. It's been worked to death. But it's just, I've just, all I've done is map out there where our ears are. Okay, and we'll start to put some bits of fur in here, I think. Use a, a smaller brush to start with. So I've got a series 305, number two, from Rosemary's. And I'm using yellow ochre with some Naples yellow. Right, and I'm looking at where... The direction of fur is again it's picking up brown because I've got brown there but I'm not bothered and it still looks hairy take that off in a minute I tend to put my darks in later on I suppose that's a bit of a watercolour throwback you know, I tend to ignore the really dark bits and then do them later on. I just want an edge to that. And I'm going to get a, a detailer brush. This brush. See, it's got quite a fine point to it. Naples yellow with some white titanium. And then I'm going to start, this isn't my smallest brush, but it just, puts a smattering of detail on. You've got some really sort of good edges around here. And this is the beauty of working from um, an iPad. You can enlarge it and have a really good look at the detail. Now you see, for me, this isn't orange enough, the detail on there. i fingerprint there. Um, but I'm not bothered about that because we'll do a session of glazes over the whole of it. I want it to have a bit of um, a yellowy glow to it. So we'll just do that session on glazes when it's all dry. Just an edge there. So even if you do it too light and too chalky, you can still come in. and glaze over the top of it and change all of that. You see, this is way too light, but I think it'll be easier to stand out on the camera. And I can always knock it back. Again, you're just doing the direction of the fur with that brush, so you're getting a little bit of detail you know it's the edges all the time and the edges against that nice dark fur where the markings are is really definite this up a little bit 
Oh, this is quite orange here on the photograph. So, just soften that. I just like to soften the fur. So what I'm going to do, I don't think I put so much paint on there yesterday. I'm going to take on just some burnt sienna, which is like your brick red colour, real sort of vibrant colour. And there's a little bit of um, white spirit on my brush and I'm just going to brush that over. See how orange you can get it. That's called a glaze. You can still see your detail underneath, but you've got a bit of a a glaze. And that's what I mean. If you don't do your colour right straight away, don't worry because you can change it. But I want a bit of a richness around there, especially around the corner. Corners in the corners of his eyes. You know, if you go too brown or go too black, you can always like warm it up a little bit. See, just around. I'm hoping this doesn't move because I did this yesterday. This right around here. Yeah, it's picked up a little bit on my brush. This is where you can get the shape, a nice rich reds of there, uh, reds and oranges. You can also get a little bit of orange on the there just to sink them in. Because if you use a lot of black, I find that, um, and a lot of blue, it tends to look cold, and you want you want it to be warm. So we've got a little bit of burnt sienna on here, so I'm just bringing it in. doing so much here because this is where I was painting last night. Okay. This brush again. You see I'm leaving all the top now because I've got it on. I've got a base but it's too wet to work into and I'm coming back into this the centre part here where we've got too strong. I don't want to go in too strong with too many highlights straight away. Just want to build up the fur. If you're going with too too bright a highlights, it looks too harsh, which you don't want, and it looks too contrasty. You want it to be subtle, but there. So I'm just going in with a little bit of. Yellow ochre, really. There's a little bit more Naples yellow in this part. And I'm trying to put in hairs where the light's picking these individual hairs up. Trying to get some shape to the nose. I always find the noses around here really quite hard and you've got to really build the fur up for it to look anything. You know, and look at the way that the fur, the fur's growing. And um, it looks really sort of sparse to start off with. Until you, you start building that up. And I'm looking at the pattern here and it's like a, a crisscross. And, you know, the hairs are sort of merging. into one what we're trying to get I'm just using Naples yellow with a little tiny touch of um, yellow ochre on there and coming into that corner <gasps> I 
there's always someone on the phone. If they want me, they'll ring me mobile. I find the nose fur is a lot harder to do than the real hairy bits at the side because the real hairy bits are just really easy to see but the fur on the nose isn't as easy it sort of sinks in a lot better and lays a lot flatter I bet it was my mum. Again, I haven't done as much on this side, so we'll build this hair business up here. And you're just seeing little dots of light fur. You know, look at the pattern on it. Try not to think of it as fur if you're struggling with it. Look at it as a pattern. And that's what you're painting. You're painting the pattern. And you can't get it to look thick if you don't build those layers up. That's what I think anyway. I mean, it's not gospel, but um, that's my take on it. And then if you want, just sort of soften it out. A little bit. You know, and just build up on it. That comes away down the side of his nose there. I mean, this is the, you know, quite a boring bit to watch, really, because you're doing little bits of detail. But this is the part, I love this part. I could just lose myself in all of this. out just individual bits of fur there. Oops, that's a bit too much. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna are quite Good again. Look at your edges because we've got a, a hard edge there and it's not like that. We want some hairy bits there. All this needs to be reworked really. Because your main focus is around there. Perhaps if we get some whites as well. these bits of hairs on his eyes I think if you're wanting to paint animals especially in a lot of detail you've got to have a lot of patience you know don't be impatient with the fur on it, it'll come together. The, the deeper your your colours, the more detail you put in. You know, 
and it's like I said to me classes look at the pattern don't always think oh there's fur there so I'll pick a load of hairs it might not look like hairs look at the pattern that you've got in front of you really look a lot of it is about looking at what you've got This had like a grey underneath, which is, I'm just going over with a white. It's got a little bit of Naples yellow in, mainly because it was on my brush. But it doesn't need to be white, white yet. I'll go back into the dark areas with dark later on. Some people like to um, paint all the markings in acrylic black to start with so that it's not dry that's where that little bit that I had to sand out was uh, yeah some people like to paint the darks in acrylic to start with you know which is perfectly fine it depends what you like to do I just like to go around the houses with it I did put some black oil paint on some of the markings, especially around the eye. I think I did that that first week. But I'm at that stage with it where I normally fall out with it for a couple of weeks, put it to one side and then come back to it two or three weeks later or sometimes months later. I've got one on my shelf. That I haven't looked at for a long, long time. About 18 months. Just putting that shine on that eye because I, I lost it. That's it. And you've got a nice white trim on the bottom of his eye you know again look at the way that the fur is growing a little bit of a crisscross you can paint the fur all one way but so, you know really if you look at it sometimes you've got a little bit of a a crisscross of lines and that always gives you depth as well if you do that now I'm going to lighten that eye up because that's bugging me now and a brush I've got a little bit of Naples yellow and a slight touch of ultramarine So you've got a little bit of a green there. Because that's getting too dark. And it's quite light, quite a bit lighter. So I'm putting that highlight around the circle of the eye. That wants to go in there as well. Right, I'm not going to leave it like that because you've got a round eyeball there. So I'm going to get a smaller soft brush, which is one of these Cotman brushes, just from the range. And it's dry, straight off on my t-shirt. And then all I'm doing, I'm doing exactly that I did up here with that big mop brush, but I'm doing it with a very small brush and in a smaller, sorry I've got a brush in my mouth smaller area so all you're doing is softening that color so it fades out you see how nice and soft and round that looks so again just round the edges I'm not going into the middle of it I'm just softening those edges perhaps dabbing on it it's a bit easier than watercolor because watercolor travels a lot further than oils oils tends to stay where you put it the main part 
so you see I've softened those edges off so it's not um, so much a hard edge you've got a nice round edge which gives the eyeballs a roundness there and then I want to make them a little bit lighter a little bit at a time you know you don't have to go in guns blazing just a little bit at a time again don't be impatient with it little bit there and I'm going to soften that off again just the edges just touching dry it off if you if it you pick up too much paint with that brush then just rub it on a tissue or my case my t-shirt why I've not got any clothes without any paint on them at all. Got a bit of light, more light there. Right, and again with that little brush, there's no paint on this brush, there's nothing on, it's just the bristles, that's all. And then I'm just very gently going around the edge. Of that and just softening see so you've got nice sort of roundness to it and you've got a bit of light in there now because if you put too much dark in the eyes go a little bit dull Yeah, there's a little bit of um, oil on the actual canvas there, so the paint's flowing a little bit more. I can still see a lot of my um, pencil underneath, so in no way is this anywhere near finishing yet. Even this bit here, there's still a lot, because for me, this is... Um, uh, the main focus of this picture so we need to really sort of build up nicely this area I'm just going to build up this white there's a little bit of Naples yellow in that because it goes quite yellow anyway at the side see I've not got that dark marking in yet but I'm not bothered I can put that in later on and it's better going in when the paint's not as wet and then it doesn't mix with that that nice light colour if it mixes everything becomes dull just bring this into the edge of that see what we've got we'll do under here as well so I'm going to put some burnt sienna with some burnt umber over here. So that makes that a little bit richer because that's quite dark. Just smudge it out. So we've got a darker base to work on. And then I'll come in with some little bits of hair so I'm using some yellow ochre with our Naples yellow because we've got some light bits of fur again you can crisscross you know don't all do them going one way do a little bit of a crisscross and then that makes it look a bit thicker Do it a little bit lighter so you a little bit there. And again, you know, if you do this too light, you can always glaze over it another time, so don't worry about it, don't stress out over it. We'll bring some, we've got some little hairs 
coming down here and then it gets quite light at the bottom so I can make those a little bit closer together because it's quite white down here See in there where it's quite sharp and light, I'm going to just press my finger against it just to soften it into that oil paint that's on underneath, that burnt sienna. I don't like it to be too harsh. You know, fur is soft, so it's just a little bit nicer when it is soft. Try and paint it so that it looks soft. That's what I'm trying to do all the time. And we've got a little bit on the... So painting in the direction because this is curved over. And I suppose I am softening it off a little bit with my, my brush. This goes quite light at the bottom, so I'm going to pick, get some white, some titanium white with a slight touch of your Naples yellow there. It's quite see-through this, so there's quite a bit of medium in, so the scope for me to put some bright highlights on there. That's quite... Christ, you can't see anything now. Sorry. Is where I am. I need a cameraman. So I'm trying to get a little bit of softness here. Just let me find my sable brush. It's a bit like the mop brush, but I'm just softening it in there because I don't like hard edges so we're getting a little bit let me just get this Got it under my arm now. <laughs> and you can pick some little bits of fur. Uh... See, this already had a base on, like we put a base at the top. This already had a base on, so I'm able to sort of work into it a little bit more. You know, if you don't use linseed oil, if you just use your white spirit, then that'll dry quite quickly. But because I put linseed underneath, it's going to sort of take about four or five days on a radiator. Some people would be horrified. But it'll take quite a bit to dry. This is why I have quite a few on the go, really. Little bits of... If you um, if you, you go over too much, you can always put your darks back in. You know, your base that you've done. softening with my finger and when you come to put your darks in which I'll do now I'm using a little bit of raw umber with some um, Payne's grey it's 
see. <laughs> Sorry, Angela. <laughs> Uh, merrily painting away, no one can see what I'm doing. Got a little bit of dark in here. So you can go back in just with little dabs of dark. You know, don't think you've got to put your dark in first. A little bit of darker. That's mixing with the white, so that's being a pain. Leave it. And then again, this isn't black, black on this side because this is my lighter side. So the light's hitting these markings. And around this corner, you'll have quite a lot of dark there. So I'm going to pick up on my Payne's Grey. And I'm going to go from that really solid mass there, I'm going to stipple it out. See, just stippling it out, because then you'll see little bits of the orange fur showing. It's not all a mass of dark. You've got little bits there, and this is gradually coming out. This is, you know, really looking... At your photograph and again if it's too much then just smudge it out with it can I just show you this dog down here on my rag box <laughs> that's full of rags for for oil painting no, no, she's content. She's got to sit on it. Oh. That's it there. That's better. Then here as well. In this dot here, it's it's like a solid block of colour in the middle, and then towards the outside, it sort of peters out and stipples out. So I'm just stippling it around the outside just to darken it. This needs darkening a bit more as well. I'm trying to paint over the camera here. It's really weird. You know, I did this little bit yesterday. So, and I couldn't really put a lot of darker bits in because it was a bit too wet and it all mixed. So if I've got a sable brush. A good thing is, you know, if you're trying to sort of do... The technique you don't need to do the whole of the animal just pick a section of it say the eyes and work out from there and just try and master that you know you don't have to do the whole of it I love just painting the eyes I could do that all day but just putting some darks in and then we'll put some darks on here. I've got some Payne's Grey and Raw Umber. So again, remember these are, this is fur as well, it's not just a block of markings. Put that there and I have got some highlights which I'll put on in a minute. So I'm going to get a highlight. I've got some um, ultramarine with a little bit of white. So you've got a nice blue highlight on top of there. The light's just hitting the top. That'll make sense when the rest is in. Gives you a little bit of an idea. Can put a highlight around that rim. I 
as well. You know, don't be frightened of the blues. That's got a bit of a highlight there. While I've got that blue on my brush, a little bit of paint grey with um, the raw umber again, put that dark marking in. Might as well put these in. You know, a nice edge to it as well. Got some there. Then I'm going to put that edge around here. This is quite a light edge there. I'll put some white with the Naples yellow. Paint all over me. Again, this is just an initial. colouring of it really. And again if you want to just just soften it the way that the fur is growing. All you need to do, you don't need to do any fancy bits. If you just smooth it out the way that the the fur's growing. Still getting used to this camera, Susan, because there's no zoom in it. So it depends when where I position it. Really, I get some more um, raw um, raw umber, and you see the edge of this dark, these dark markings. That's fur as well. So you need to bring that out. See, so you've got some lines of fur around the edges as well. That's what I say when I look at, you know, look at your edges. Again, bring that in. If you need to turn it around, turn it upside down always. If it's easier to do fur that way. Get in there. Okay. And here. And there is only so much you can do while it's it's still wet. I suppose this is why people like acrylic so much because it dries pretty quick. But I can't. I think some, I'm too harsh with acrylics. I can't cope. I suppose I'm a bit slow, really. If I can get this to a, a sort of state where it's looking like something next week we'll see if we can do some glazes over and I'll show you about oranging it up and stuff like that 
now I've got my light I can work at night as well. There's a little bit of uh, fur here which is what we want as well so I'm going to take some Naples yellow. There's a little bit of white spirit in. Then you're looking at the way that the fur is travelling. I lay off my brush. And I think we need a bit of white in that maple shadow. I think it's a lovely colour, Naples yellow. It's a really subtle, subtle off-white colour. So you don't need to use a yellow, which is too, too bright. So you can do, if you're doing the fur, it's, it's all going that way. But if you do it, uh, so all the lines go that way, it looks a bit flat. So if you gently crisscross it a little bit, gentle crisscrosses it looks quite busy and it looks like fur and thick fur see one that way perhaps that way a bit you know look at your edges as well look how crisscross the fur will be on the edge You know, perhaps you've got some, or you've got a little bit at the bottom here. I'm going to put some more yellow ochre in this, because I don't want the fur to be too bright down here. Got a little bit. Might darken this in a glaze, this, this tiny little bit of fur at a later date, because I don't want it to be too obvious. I can still see my pencil marks. I bring this. Up there. Tell you what we've got as well. Is that me? Right, everyone see that? Right, this is a little bit wet here, and this is a little bit blurred, so it's still wet because it's all over the back of my hand, I've been leaning on it. So I've got my Naples yellow, and on what I want this, there's going to have a lot of whiskers here, so this is going to be in the distance behind those whiskers, so that's why I want to keep it very slightly blurred. I don't want it to be as sharp as what I'm going to do around here so that all this comes forward especially with the white whiskers because the whiskers are going to be white. This is why I'm wanting to yellow up all of this area so that the whites of the whiskers stand out. Right so with this I've just got a little bit of Naples yellow and I'm just doing some very fine hair. This is a smaller detailer brush, a Series 315 from Rosemary, and it's a 20 stroke zero. can still see my, my pencil lines, but what I'm doing is I'm putting very, very light um, hairs in. Now, they're not dead bright. You can only just see them, but they're there. So that when I do put my whiskers in, which are totally white, this will disappear into the background. 
this is a lot of his main hair which is quite jumbly then as it comes towards the outside I'm going to put a little, let me put a bit more see if that's better, put a bit more light no Ollie, go on, go away Ollie wants to know who I'm talking to no then as I come towards the outside I'm just going in with a little bit more white right just putting some I'm trying to be really whoops trying to be really soft right get a sable brush try not to do that for goodness sake let's get some dark and back that out Now the dogs are having a play, if you if you hear them, it's the dogs. They're showing off now. And we've got some sort of bits of fur, wisps of fur sticking out at this side. But I want to keep it soft on the edges because I want it very, very slightly blurred. So we've got a little bit of depth there. This will become more um, apparent and you know you'll it'll make more sense when I get the whiskers in because I don't want to use white at all in this area. That's why I'm using an off white so that when I do the whiskers they'll really stand out. That's the theory anyway. Whether it works is another thing. You know, just if you're using photographs as well, it's try and change it a little bit. Oops. This was oiled up yesterday, but it's um it's actually it's not too bad at all really. It's dried a lot. So you can see you're just getting a subtle smattering of fur around there, crisscrossing. So you're getting a little bit of um, detail there. It's a really fine brush this as well. And this dark here that, that indicates you've got a stripe there that's a little bit blurred, that's not as dark as it should be yet either. You know, I mean, you can see why I take so long on my paintings. I really try and sort of get into them. 
I don't just like to paint them and that's it. I sort of really get into doing them this way. I'm just try to get some, rid of some of these pencil marks. This at the, this side, this is white, so I'm going to get some white. See if we can get a contrast going here. crossing going on and just a little bit You know, it's all about blending and edges. Don't think you just paint it and that's it. Just slap a bit of paint on. To me, I like to push that paint about and soften it and manipulate it. I suppose that's why I can't get on with acrylics. That's it, we're getting a bit of a good edge on there now. Got a nice hair there. It's got a bright side to it. That'll make more sense when everything is is on there. That's got a real highlight that little edge there so get some white and go back in Okay, I'm going to stop it there because everything's a bit wet around there. But what I'll do is, you can see now, you can see this edge here is a lot softer. You can see the shine on there where the oil is. But you can see how I'm trying to soften that edge out so that we get a little bit of a a blur. I'm just softening it a bit more with with a soft brush. I don't want it to be too sharp. That that stripe there needs to be a bit darker. So you see this is quite dark. That needs to be a bit darker so that um the stripes will stand out a little bit more. Then when I've got all that detailing, what I want to do is glaze it a little bit and make it a lot more yellow. Because then, when I put the um, white whiskers in, it'll stand out. If I make it so that it's got a yellow glow because of the light, and then these whiskers will really stand out, then hopefully this area will pull away from the rest because this is quite soft focus. This is going to be soft focus at the top, but your ears at the top are going to be quite... Um, detailed if I can just bring it down so that perhaps we get oh. tell you what let me turn these lights off okay. so we've not got as much of a can you see that a little bit now that a little bit better you see that soft focused body at the bottom it's not immediately noticeable on camera but you can see it a little bit and 
me get my brushes. You see the, the whiskers at the bottom. I haven't really put those in, but they'll be a lot sharper as well. So hopefully this area will pull forward away from these um, fuzzy bits at the side. That's what I want to keep sort of out of focus. And this will all be detailed. But these bits at the, the top and the side will be a bit fuzzy as well. That's the theory. Whether it works out is another thing. But what we've got in, we have got the main area of focus, which is those nice, you know, eyes, which is quite important in a tiger. So, okay. So it's been a bit of a hodgepodge, this one. Um, we started with the, the soft focus at the top. If I go a bit closer. Can you see how soft that is? A bit closer. That's what I was doing at the top. That's out of focus. You see? that's You can see all my pencil marks are very crude. And all the markings and the um, stripes are very crude. But that's there just to guide me. Um, and I've sort of, you know, started with that a little bit out of focus. So all this bit coming down here... I can do in a lot more detail now. See the eyes are in a lot of detail and across the bridge of the nose, you know, that's got to be all worked up. This side has got to be all worked up. Um, these are just basics on at the moment. I started doing the, you see this, this side here, I started doing that side. Um, all this out of focus and then this sort of semi out of focus so that when I put these whiskers on it's going to really pop out the whiskers will and that will be pushed right to the back that's my theory there's going to be a couple of little bits of highlights here which are going to be really white um, and then we'll go from there little bits of highlights but the rest is going to be quite sort of yellow I would think. A bit of a yellow glow to him. Okay, is there any questions? I think we're all on a glow slow today. Okay, but you can see from the close up it's it's starting to come on. This is quite crude here. This is all still very crude. Um but this is I find this part of the nose takes a lot of building up, a lot of building up. Okay, so hopefully we'll, I'll crack on with that next week. Um, I'll try and do a little bit more this week if I get time in between my other stuff. But you can see how much work goes into these paintings. Is anyone listening? <laughs> okay, and I'll see you next week. Hopefully. If I haven't lost everybody by then.